I hope everyone I'm back again so uh, in terms of uh, high-end smartphones in the Android space uh, do you prefer a larger screen with high specs or a smaller screen with high specs I think uh, this is the issue which uh, confronts you when you're choosing between something like the Xperia Z1 Compact and the Galaxy S5 uh, both uh, high-end Android devices, uh, but come in uh, slightly different form factors. Uh, well, should we say very different form factors? Uh, in that uh, the Xperia Z1 Compact uh, is a 4.3 inch device, whereas the Samsung is a 5.1 inch device. Uh, one is built uh, primarily out of uh, plastic with uh, full metal. Uh, whereas the other is built out of primarily uh, a glass kind of construction with a uh, deceptively faux glass back, uh, which I think is actually uh, plastic. Uh, but uh, obviously, you know, you're going to have uh, differences in terms of how they feel in the hand. Uh, they both uh, do feel quite solid uh, with the Z1 Compact feeling very solid uh, obviously you can get your thumb around the Z1 Compact very easily uh, there's no issues there uh, whereas on the S5 you may uh, struggle if you've got smaller hands personally I don't find it too difficult uh, to get around it uh, I can easily reach all the corners etc but uh, some people may struggle with that uh, you do feel that uh, they are roughly the same in terms of the uh, thickness of each device uh, as well as the weight of each device. Uh, they both feel the same. Uh, the backs, however, feel very different and that's primarily due to the differing textures on each one. Uh, some would call the Samsung texture to be ugly or an improvement over the last generation. Uh, but uh, personally I do prefer the Sony back uh, because it does to me look a bit more uh, premium uh, however it does pick up these fingerprints and smudges which is obviously a downfall of it uh, and it is more prone to scratching apparently so the Galaxy S5 is probably the more durable backing uh, which will look neater for a longer time but it's uh, still a, quite a polarizing design decision uh, also obviously you've got uh, those high rated um, cameras on the back uh, with Samsung with its ISO cell 60 megapixel and the uh, Sony Z1 Compact with its 20.7 megapixel G lens uh, I think again I do prefer uh, the Sony's uh, styling of the camera uh, because it doesn't jut out as much uh, I didn't like that when I had a HTC One X at one point. The camera lens jutted out quite much. I was always afraid that it was going to be scratched or something. Uh, but you can definitely see that uh, the S5 does uh, stick out a bit. So I'd be a bit worried about uh, you know putting it on the desk quite hard. Uh, whereas the one on the Z1 Compact does look more uh, protected. Uh, they both, uh, I think, have a single LED flash, uh, so uh, similar in, in that respect. Uh, they both also uh, provide waterproofing, however Sony goes a bit overboard with its flaps, and I do prefer what Samsung uh, do in regards to their waterproof. I think it's water resistant in fact, not waterproof, uh, so uh, you do get a higher... Uh, ability of water resistance on the Z1 Compact, but still I do prefer what uh, Samsung do in regards to their uh, protection against water. Uh, I do like the way that they only have one flap, uh, and in my opinion it's much easier to get it open at night uh, compared to uh, what you have on the Z1 Compact. Uh, you do get used to the positioning on the Z1 Compact uh, eventually but it's still a bit of a faff and there are more flaps as well so obviously there's more chances of one coming off 
Uh, whereas if you've only got one on the uh, S5, then you've got less chance of that. Also, the S5 has a USB 3.0 port there, so that's faster connectivity, uh, whereas the Z1 doesn't. Uh, but uh, the Z1 does make up for that in that it has a physical shutter button, which the Galaxy doesn't, uh, and uh, the charging bay as well. You can buy a cheap uh, charging dock off eBay, and that would solve the flaps issue. Uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it would be nice if Sony did uh, provide one in the box. Uh, but uh, I do prefer the volume rocker being on the right side as well compared to on the left side on the Galaxy. Uh, I think it's more natural, uh, really. But uh, you know, you may differ, particularly if you hold your phone uh, kind of uh, like that or something. But uh, I know I don't. Uh, but uh, other than the build quality, uh, you have uh, kind of. Uh, different uh, screen technologies obviously you got the very uh, kind of bright colorful display of the Samsung uh, which is uh, Super AMOLED HD plus uh, which is very uh, bright and uh, responsive uh, I don't think it's actually a Super AMOLED plus uh, I forget what they call it now I think it's Super AMOLED HD I think the Super AMOLED plus was with the Galaxy S2 uh, but uh, subsequent ones have been the Super AMOLED HD type and uh, I'm very pleased with the screen on the S5 I think it's a big improvement over the S4 colors appear accurate and viewing angles are very good uh, in daylight as well you can see the screen quite well as you can see it's quite bright where I am at the moment uh, again you know I'm a big fan of the screen technology that Sony have put into the S uh, the Z1 uh, which is an IPS panel now and uh, it's got the Bravia tech in there and the Triluminous tech uh, so everything just looks very nice and uh, uh, accurate in terms of the colour accuracy viewing angles etc are fantastic compared to the, the old Z1 uh, and uh, very viewable outdoors as well both screens uh, get quite bright so uh, you've got no issues in regards to uh, sunlight visibility. Uh, if I'm going to say which one I prefer, I probably prefer the S5's screen a little bit more because it is an AMOLED screen. I do prefer AMOLED screens. However, I do appreciate the screen that uh, Sony have put into uh, the Z1 Compact. It to me looks uh, almost like an AMOLED screen itself, actually. I think uh, they say AMOLED screens are more power efficient as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, I do prefer you know the Samsung Moto X, Nokia type uh, AMOLED displays. Uh, but uh, in regards to the specifications, you know you rock in a Snapdragon 800 in the Z1 Compact, and uh, Snapdragon 801 in the Galaxy S5, uh, coupled with two gigs of RAM. Uh, so uh, in my day-to-day -day usage, I found them to be both uh, very nippy. Uh, going in and out of stuff very uh, quick indeed for example uh, I've been recently trying to uh, lag lag the uh, S5 trying to make it uh, slow down kind of thing to see if they they have uh, made it so that it does slow down but I've been unable to uh, which is kudos to Samsung for making the uh, latest version of touch was very uh, you know fluid and easy to use well not I wouldn't say easy to use but a much more fluid experience than the uh, s4 version uh, everything opens up uh, very nice and quickly uh, there's very uh, little delay or anything it's very nice well optimized skin uh, on the Sony, again, it's a similar type of story in that uh, everything opens up uh, very quickly. Obviously, it does have uh, less pixels to push.
So uh, as you can see, very nice fluid performance. Uh, if we just uh, try putting them up face to face against uh, maps, for example. Very little difference. Although the screen does seem a bit more responsive on the S5. Both screens, I think, support glove mode because when uh, you use a glove on this, you see a little circle come on the screen. So, what am I doing? So, try uh, Play Store. Let's go back. So I'm trying to close everything down there and uh, get them both to open at the same time. If I can find it. So as you can see, very little differences there. You know, very uh, similar performance across the board. Uh, obviously I think that the Samsung is probably going to be a little bit more future-proof because it does have uh, quite high efficiency gains in regards to the Snapdragon 801 but really it's not worth talking about too much you're going to get an excellent fluid experience on both of them uh, but I am interested actually to see uh, how they perform in regards to Quadrant see if the uh, Z1 Compact can keep up with the uh, Samsung if I could find uh, what I'm looking for. Got so many apps on here. I can't. I can't see it. Ah, there it is. All right, let's start them up at the same time. Uh, it looks like the Samsung is getting ahead of itself and we've seen the benefit of having that Snapdragon 801. I do hope that Motorola do launch their new Moto X with the 801 because it would feel uh, a bit late to launch it with a Snapdragon 800. So the Galaxy S5 finishes just ahead of the Z1 Compact. Not too far behind the Z1 Compact, saying that uh, it is an older processor. So in terms of uh, the other stuff, uh, obviously both of them are high-end smartphones, so you're getting the latest 4G LTE, uh, you're getting Bluetooth, NFC, etc. Uh, with Samsung and Sony's little additions, such as uh, the ability to throw, uh, your movie to a DNLA compliant device such as your Xbox or something or your PlayStation uh, Samsung as well have that type of stuff built in with its media server uh, which is very nice uh, and uh, both uh, have uh, 16 gigs internal storage uh, let me just double check that in fact don't want to be giving you the wrong information. Yeah, that's right. So they both have 16 gigs internal storage uh, and uh, both have micro SD expandability, which is very nice. Uh, some often that's what uh, manufacturers seem to miss nowadays uh, and uh, the Samsung goes a step further obviously you can remove the 
uh, battery which is a 2800 mAh inside uh, and uh, that's uh, very useful for people who are on the road a lot uh, you can just flip off this back cover uh, and get into it quite quickly uh, and uh, you can't do that on the Z1 Compact uh, which uh, comes with 2300 mAh or 400 uh, but uh, battery life is very strong on this device anyway so uh, it's not going to be too much of a problem uh, but uh, both of them uh, also obviously have those excellent uh, cameras attached to them uh, with the Sony being a slightly higher megapixel in terms of 20.7 megapixel uh, but uh, the ca caveat there is that you can only shoot in uh, 4.3 aspect ratio uh, which is a bit of a disappointment uh, but uh, I, I've got really excellent results just from leaving it on auto and, take, and that takes them in uh, 3 megapixel, uh, sorry 8 megapixel uh, which uh, tends to do an excellent job whether it's uh, indoors, outdoors, good light, low light etc. Uh, in, it quickly uh, scans to see what the actual uh, scene is so uh, if you've got the phone on a tripod for example it can automatically detect that and keep it still. Uh, it can see that I'm doing something uh, manual here so uh, it's you know, adjusting the settings to be good in manual mode. Uh, but uh, that's I really like Sony's superior auto mode. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but uh, budding photographers may want to give the 20.7 megapixel camera some more customization by putting the manual setting on, uh, which uh, is very you know in depth in regards to what you can do. Uh, but uh, Probably not as in-depth as the Samsung, which uh, lets you customise just about everything in the kitchen sink uh, under its camera app. Uh, it does have a similar type of uh, auto auto uh, function. I'm nearly knocking my camera over here, uh, which uh, is uh, very uh, good at uh, getting the right scene. Uh, it doesn't give you the info, unfortunately, though, what, what it's trying to do. I do like the way Sony gives you the info in the bottom right-hand corner, like you saw the word macro. Uh, you don't get that on the Samsung, but it's very fast to focus uh, and usually focuses without any issues and very, very fast to take the picture as well, uh, which uh, usually comes out very uh, high detailed and excellent. Uh, I'd say that uh, the Galaxy S5 seems to absorb more light in uh, low light situations than the Z1 Compact, uh, but they're both good nevertheless. Uh, but in regards to the features, you know, you, you're getting a lot of features on the Galaxy S5, and some people may find that a bit overwhelming, uh, but photo photographers will appreciate it. You do get uh, uh, the ability to take uh, put on like uh, the standard things such as a timer, a HDR, uh, video stabilization, etc. Uh, but uh, you do get some stuff that you don't get on uh, the stock uh, Z1 Compact ROM, such as 4K recording. Uh, you can route the Z1 Compact and get that on. Uh, if, I might uh, do that in future, uh, but. Uh, in general, you know, there's a lot of settings you can choose from, and uh, most people might want to keep it on auto. Uh, you can also do the dual camera thing as well if you like have your face superimposed on the video. Uh, so, you know, they're both fully featured cameras. Uh, if I'm to say which one I prefer, I probably prefer the Z1 Compact that a little bit more. I think it just does a little bit better job when it comes to the auto mode, and because I'm quite lazy when it comes to uh, taking pictures, I do like it just to do the job so I don't have to think about it and uh, also obviously if you if you wish to you can do some excellent uh, underwater uh, video and uh, cameras pictures on the Z1 Compact uh, but uh, I don't know if you can actually do that on the Samsung uh, but I do prefer the camera on the, the Sony a little bit more 
Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, I've mentioned the battery life uh, a million times already. So, uh, you know, the battery life is not going to be an issue on either phone. Uh, in terms of longevity, I think the Galaxy wins just about. Uh, probably due to the, the more up-to-date processor, the AMOLED screen, uh, as well as uh, the excellent uh, modes that you can get on there, such as the ultra power saving mode, which uh, pretty much turns everything off and uh, makes it uh, kind of like a 1960s device. I say turn everything off, but it doesn't actually turn everything off. You can still make calls and messages to it uh, and do stuff. So, uh, But the functionality is very basic on ultra power saving mode. And uh, apparently it can get you a couple of weeks usage from like 10-20%. So that's really good for people who are without a battery source. Uh, or power source, should I say. Uh, but... Uh, you know, let's get that off because uh, at the end of the day, the battery is excellent anyway, and you shouldn't need to really do that on a day to day basis. Uh, the Z1 Compact, uh, as you know, it comes with Sony's stamina mode, uh, which switches off non essential things uh, when the screen's off, uh, such as uh, I think Wi Fi data, etc. You can also whitelist apps to run and uh, ban them from running, so that will extend your standby time. So, uh, in terms of battery life, I think that uh, the Z1 Compact does a very good job because it's a lot smaller at the end of the day, and you only expect monster battery life from bigger handsets. Uh, whereas, you know, 2300 or 400 mAh, I forget the exact amount, but. I don't think I've found a device with such a good battery life. Uh, you know, it's better than the Moto G. I think it's up there probably with the original Moto uh, Raza, Raza Max. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic battery life. Uh, but uh, I think that the removable battery, the ultra power saving mode, and uh, you know, the um, just the general higher capacity does make the S5 more of a road user's device uh, if you're looking for that kind of thing uh, in terms of uh, the software they're both running obviously custom skins so you know you either like your TouchWiz or you don't I do think that Samsung have made some excellent uh, improvements to TouchWiz uh, and uh, have made it look more attractive uh, and just run a lot more smoother because before it was you know a laggy mess to be honest and it was very ugly but these uh, customizable uh, views uh, are very uh, cleaner uh, they're not perfect you know I'd like it if it was a bit more clear in regards to what section everything is because now and again I find myself just you know looking around thinking like where is something like you saw before I was looking for storage and I couldn't find it uh, probably that is due to the massive amount of features you can do on the Galaxy S5 you know but uh, some of these features I really like such as download booster which is a great way to combine your 4G and your Wi-Fi uh, for faster download speeds uh, fingerprint scanner, you know, a bit gimmicky. I wouldn't use it myself, uh, but some people might like that. Uh, heart re heartbeat sensor as well, good for fitness people, I guess. Uh, you know, I think you've got uh, all the air view things as well uh, under motion stuff, motion gestures, air browse. Sometimes I feel really guilty having these 500 pound devices and not actually trying to do these things or use these things. I wonder if it works. Ah, it does work. There you go. That's actually quite fun. I might do that more often. So, uh, you know, those sorts of things are cool for impressing your friends. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, if you master them, then you probably wouldn't be able to do without them. Uh, but 
I think that uh, Sony has gone for a more kind of refined experience, uh, which uh, just gets the phone functionality uh, in order kind of thing. And uh, it's much more clearer the settings, for example, as you can see, I can quickly go into a setting that I want to find uh, without getting lost. Uh, you do get some nice little things that Sony have put in there, such as, uh, uh, what have they put in here? They haven't put too much in, to be honest, but, for example, the screen mirroring settings I was mentioning about, uh, linking with your PS4. If you've got one, I've got a uh, Xbox uh, Dual Shock wireless controller, so you can connect to that. Not of interest to me because I don't have a PS4, uh, but uh, obviously you do get uh, Sony's excellent uh, apps, uh, such as the Walkman app, which is very good for you know customizing your equalizer settings. Uh, Sony uh, comes with um, the Music Unlimited, Video Unlimited, etc. Track ID, which uh, can find out what uh, music you, you're listening to, similar to Shazam. Uh, but, uh, you know, in general, oh yeah, and let's not forget the excellent uh, AR modes that you can get for the camera, uh, as well as... Uh, these modes, I think this is time shift. Is this time shift? No, it's info eye. So you can basically point the camera at something and it'll tell you what you're looking at. And what's this? Time shift. Find the best photo from burst images before and after your shot. Hmm, I'll have to explore that a bit more. I don't really know what that does, but so uh, obviously Sony do put some stuff in there that uh, you can explore and uh, do that you wouldn't be able to do on stock Android. Uh, but uh, I think generally uh, different people will appreciate uh, like the different experiences. Some people may like the uh, different features of the Galaxy S5. <laughs> I don't know if this will work, but. Uh, it seems it doesn't, uh, but uh, other people will appreciate having a more cleaner, simpler experience like on the Z1 Compact. Uh, so uh, it's up to you really. Uh, I think personally uh, I do prefer a more kind of uh, stock like appearance. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind having lots of different features on a device as long as I'm going to use them. Uh, but uh, you might be different uh, so uh, don't forget as well you can get uh, S voice by just double tapping the home button what's the weather today? What is HTC's stock? Here is the answer to your question. Now, if I asked my Moto X that, I would be actually told what the stock was as opposed to just shown it. So, uh, need a bit of improvement there. But uh, it seems to be better than it was before. And uh, probably they're using Google services to improve the accuracy of it. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, most people will probably just be happy to stick with uh, Google's actual uh, Google's uh, actual search facility and voice activation. Uh, I'm going to end the video about here now because I'm ranting a bit. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, overall they're both uh, excellent devices. And, uh, you know, it's up to you what you're looking for. If you're looking for something which is very focused, uh, very nice in the hand, 
uh, with excellent hardware and very compact, then the Z1 Compact is an excellent choice. Uh, it still offers a fantastic premium build quality, fantastic camera, fantastic battery life, uh, fantastic screen. I really can't fault the device really, uh, except for the bezels and the bezels I think could be improved by you know making them a little bit narrower, uh, putting a little bit more screen real estate in there, uh, as well as uh, there's a few software bugs as well which Sony needs to iron out uh, and the back as well is a bit uh, fingerprinty but uh, it's an excellent device nevertheless uh, and uh, with the Galaxy S5 you know this is a Road Warriors device something that won't let you down uh, you can swap out the battery quickly uh, you can enjoy excellent uh, viewing angles with the Super AMOLED screen and the high contrast etc uh, you know, it's uh, excellent uh, in terms of its feature set. It's got a lot more features than uh, what Sony are doing in their devices. Uh, if you like your download booster, your heart rate sensor, your fingerprint scanner, etc., then you can't go wrong with it. So, uh, if you like the video, please uh, thumbs up it or subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.